Live one on one. Good evening. It's great to be back with you. Uh, we appreciate it every single time you make out time to uh, hang out with us. Uh, my name is Titelaya Oyinso, and uh, there are just some conversations I enjoy having. I like meeting new people, learning new things, and I love bringing people along for the ride. Now, photography is a major powerful medium for conveying messages, for telling stories, and creating a brand image. Now, the art of photography involves more than just pressing the shutter button. It's a creative process. It requires the photographer to have a, a vision, a message, some kind of deep understanding of their brand's identity. This is the one-on-one -on -one podcast. And on this episode, we're looking at photography closely, the creative process and the importance of conveying a brand's image. With us, we have Arnold Chukudauru. I hope I got that right. Did I get it right? <laughs> Chukudauru Nwafo. Now, he is a creative director and founder of Nwafo Arnold Photography, or NAP for short. Now, he's a graduate of economics education uh, at Abraka. That's uh, Delta State University. And uh, he's an experienced photographer. He has a passion for visually stunning images. In fact, let me see if I can show you a few of them right now so that you understand how stunning some of these pictures actually are. And uh, you have to appreciate um, what he's been able to achieve in his uh, time sojourn as a photographer. Amazing stuff. All right. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay. So at this point, we're going to welcome him in to the studio, uh, but not before I give you a little uh, info. So I, I, I have a QR code right there on the screen. Um, and I would love for you to scan this because I know everyone is trying to find some kind of online business to do some kind of opportunity. Now, this is for those that are into beauty products and skincare. So this particular company is called The Untamed, and it has some amazing organic products that are so amazing. So uh, now, if you are really into business, then you will understand the benefit of having something as high as 43% commission on sales. So let's just say you sell 100,000 Naira worth of products. I'm talking about 43,000 Naira coming back to you as a commission for those sales. Hey, I don't know where else you'll get a deal better than that. Scan the QR code on the screen right now to get started. And uh, yeah, our team will get back to you. Some amazing stuff there. You will thank me later, not to worry. All right, then let's welcome in our guest for today. I mentioned him earlier on. He's uh, passionate about photography, the founder, creative director, NAP Photography. Hi, Arnold. Hi. How's it going? Fine. I'm grateful. Fine. It's going well. Welcome to the show. Yes, Mo. So, um, so we had some drama trying to get connected online just now. I don't know. It was like... <laughs> some sound drama, some light drama at my end. I was like, what's going on? I want to have this conversation. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you. All right. So now photography means different things to different people. Some people just think of photography as, eh, hey, make I use my phone snap now. Is it not the same thing? Uh, talk to us about your journey and your background in photography. Okay. Um, yeah. So, I started photography uh, officially, that was 2019. Well, let me go in on a small talk um, before before that. So I think when I was in GS3 SS1, I had uh, the opportunity to choose uh, between a guitar and a camera as a den. I, I wanted to at or at first, but when we checked the course and how much it cost, it was like, it was quite expensive, I was like, no, 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 I can't afford that now. Uh, I need to make use of, of the guitar. The guitar. Funny story, I bought that guitar. I was with the guitar for like close to seven years to my higher institution. I love the guitar instrument, but I could not really play it well. I believe I didn't have what it took, uh, what they call uh, the music years. I, I didn't have that when you can just denote. Um, a sound and find what notes it's placed on. I didn't. I didn't have that. Fast forward to after my NC, which I ran for a year, I decided I wanted to learn learn something, and I was like, okay, what 
what well, what should I go for? And I thought about photography. It came in again into the picture. So it was just it was just like I needed to learn a skill. That's how I started. But along the way, when when I started, I I really fell in love with photography. It was it was it was like everything, like everything to me. And after school, I uh, I took it as as a career path. That was October 2019. I took it as a career path. And to now we'll be going, creating amazing images, trying to extend, and we'll, we'll be doing our best. And it's been fun. It's been fun. It's been fun. It's been fun. It's been it's it's it's, it's been really, really, really great. Really, really, really great. Be really, really great. So I can see you've been having fun with your photography, really. I'm just scrolling through your Instagram page there, and it's extremely colorful. Uh, I'm loving the energy, very positive smiles, a lot of great colors. Uh, I love the lighting as well. But, you know, photography is one of those things that not a lot of people earlier on could have seen as something you pursue, uh, or rather you pursue as a, a career. Yeah. Um, you know. You need to take us through that thought process, the conceptualization, and then, of course, all the way to your final product. How do you make it happen? So, um, my whole entire creative process starts from when I'm being given a pitch. For example, if you contact me and say, "Hey, Arnold, I will like, I will want you to render your service. I will want you to photograph us." I'm like, "Okay." What actually are we are we shooting for? You understand? And like, oh, uh, we're shooting for a brand. We're shooting for this. We're shooting for that. You understand? So depending on what you tell me, uh, my next question is: Okay, what is the plan for the outfit? Uh, let's let's take let's take for a family session, for example. I'm like, okay, what's the plan for the outfit? Uh, what are the colors you're making use of? You understand? So when I get that information on my own end, I tend to create. Um, a mood board um, that fits in into um, uh, into the shoot at hand, like in terms of poses, smile, arrangement, mm. and colors. I am very particular about colors. You understand? Because mm. you there's a theory behind color. You don't just combine colors like that. There's a theory behind mm. color. So when I know the color of the outfit you're putting on, I know the color of the background to bring. I'm like, okay, if you put on this outfit. This kind of background will look nice. This is the color of your skin tone and all of that. And mm. some most times I get to um, share it with the client. It's okay, this is what we're going to do for the first outfit. Um, this is the arrangement and all of that. So those are create uh, amazing, mm. beautiful images. Mm. Mm. Now, it does feel like a lot of photography now feels very touched up, um, like as if you've used some kind of software to make it look um enhance yeah you know um and you know it does feel like a lot of photographers use a lot of these softwares now um what do you think about this software and how do you think it affects photography is it negatively or positive um so power power before now uh i think before i started when you're making use of uh manual camera that was like the manual camera they make use of fame and all it was just go to the lab watch the film and you get a picture instead now there mm. are amazing softwares out there amazing softwares mm. there to enhance enhance your pictures to make it more pleasing to the eye instead mm. and to me it has affected photography positively because you you can't deny what you see once you see something that's appealing you say no this is appealing so just imagine taking a work photo and you're giving it back to the client. It is not really a pleasing. There might be some um, um, objects that are distracting in the entire frame. These softwares mm -hmm. allow you to take uh, these objects away neatly and make the image stand out. So, to me, okay, the software it is amazing. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Now there is quite a demand for wedding photography now. Um, you know, um, and there seems to be a wedding every single weekend. I don't think there's ever a weekend where there's no wedding. <laughs> um, and especially in you Lagos, know, in Lagos, especially. Um, now, 
it does feel like, you know, when you've seen one wedding, you've seen them all, you know, so how are you able to make sure that you continue being creative, um, you know, bring out something unique when every bride in some people's opinion, almost every bride looks the same. It's a white dress. It's Ashoke. Yeah. It's Gilly. What next? Talk to us. So, like, like I said, everything needs to, everything needs to be planned. I've seen, I've seen, I have clients who wanted to book me for a wedding. They were like, okay, during the discussion, was like, I will recommend this hotel. I will recommend this hotel, and I will recommend this hotel. Because they have like amazing um, aesthetics there, understand? So it gets to from what you're about to photograph. You you need an amazing background for weddings, an amazing a place that that's beautiful. You get me? So I think that's one of the things that stand out. Another thing is um, the way you light uh, your lighting. Also, uh, now in photography, far back as as it uh, 2020, 2019, um still lights became a thing in the wedding industry now almost everybody's using like still lights is a thing before before then it used to be like strobe lights you understand mm. and i think another important thing for me is you you need to understand your clients uh especially mm. for weddings the day you're a photographer you're not just a photographer you are the bride friend you are a hype mm. man you are you are everybody's <laughs> friend at that, at that particular day you are everybody's friend because when you get them to be happy and comfortable with you, trust mm. you get amazing images. You might have all mm. the knowledge, best lights, best camera, but if your subject, if you don't know how to interact with the subject for he or she to be comfortable with you, mm. you might not get the best of the best images. You might not get the best of the best mm. images. So I mm. think that that's just it for me. The lightning and and the location where where you're about to shoot and how to communicate with with your subjects very very important very 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 important okay now look at this cute baby oh my goodness a six month old so there's different places to take pictures now um different locations of course um your studio um is it set up for adults and children because i'm thinking you probably had to set something up specially for this baby that i'm looking at all right uh so let me let me just buzz the bubble a little bit i okay. i want a mobile studio this was taken in the client's house wow okay all right but all right I, I, all right I, I, so you're you prefer mobile do you prefer mobile what are the disadvantages of having your uh your work mobile as opposed to having an actual studio for people to come to okay um Talk. yeah so i think i think i think one of the advantages of having a mobile is um if one if you don't have a vehicle um you tend to pay everything for transport sometimes you understand mm -hmm. two uh you get to you get to waste so much time to some extent you understand and um mm -hmm. More, more also, we when you're in the client's house and there's not enough space, you have to utilize the space to create amazing images. I mean, I have shot in tight positions and still create amazing images, but in other words, it tends to um, sharpen mm. your photography and lightning skills. You understand? Mm. But to the mm. but to the advantage, the business aspect is that um, you you you're not you're not paying for a space. You're not paying for a space mm. because you don't get to shoot every day. It's not really like that in photography business. Especially for the way I operate, you have to book me ahead. You, I don't, mm. I don't do walk-ins. You understand? You don't get to 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 shoot every day. So days you don't get to shoot, you're actually making loss. Mm. But technically, if you want a a mobile studio, you you're not making mm. loss at all. You said because you're not paying for rent, and most importantly. Okay. I tend to divide to my client that it's at their own comfort. Honestly, these days, a lot of people prefer to shoot at their home, where they're comfortable, mm. where they're really, really more comfortable. And it tends to also show on your photographs. Because once the storage is comfortable, you're, you're, mm. you're good to go. You're good to go. All right. I was actually going to go further with this issue of um, challenges that you, you know, you have to go through. Um, yeah. 
especially in in a city like Lagos, you know, that you must have encountered quite a few challenges uh, running this business. Now, you said you started this in 2019, so you've had four years uh, of this work now. So talk to us about the the most challenging aspects of your job. Um, I think the most challenging aspect of this job is, um, um, apart from the business side, uh, we need to spend as much as we spend trying to get an um, equipment on marketing also. And now the market is a little bit quite saturated on like how, how it started. Now, now people's like, photography, photography, let me just get photography mm. for the money. You understand? We were, we were very free that started with, um, with, uh, with, with a passion, you understand? And that's why I say a lot of people free in and free exit out of, um, out of, of, of the old photography process and all. But one of my greatest advantages, um, like I said, the business aspect of it, um, trying to get more clients who can pay you for your value, mm. you understand? Trying to get more clients who can pay you for mm. your value. Another one is, uh, mm. this is a job whereby you meet uh, different people with different tastes. Um, and some have amazing personalities, some do not have amazing personality, you understand? So as, as a young chap then, as a long chap, so as a young chap, uh, I tried to, I learned a lot from different people personalities because you're shooting different people every day. It's not like a corporate or whatever. It's the same manager for four years, five years, and all. Okay, I can see you. You you did uh, some work for a makeup brand here, a cosmetic brand here. I think this is beautiful. I, li I love the, the colors, but it must have been really challenging to light this. Uh, because of the different skin tones I'm seeing in this in this photo, uh, this I feel like this must have been challenging. Talk to us about this picture. So um, it was really quite challenging. So what I did was um, the girl at my left hand side, um, Sally, she was really really light skin, and my mm -hmm. key light was mm -hmm. coming from my right hand, which is like um, my main light. So. Sorry. So because I know she was light skin, I didn't place her mm. on the right side because I know her skin is going to affect light so much. Because okay. I'm trying to use okay. a good number of light to light the other side. So I have to put her at the left hand side. You stand where there's mm. less light eating her, but she still looks bright up and, and beautiful. Mm. Mm. Then the dark one, I have to put the dark one in the middle just to contrast. Mm. Um, the old skin tones and that, so it was, it was that. That was it. That was it. All right. I'm. I'm wondering, how did you select the backdrop for this? What were you thinking about when you picked this brown <laughs> backdrop? Yeah. So, um, like I said, I'm very key on colors. Very key mm. on colors. So we have what we call um, the neutral density colors. We have what we call neutral density colors, which are white, black, ash, cream. Mm and brown so because of what we're looking what we're trying to achieve and it was not something mm. we we're trying to get something very colorful and also okay fine let's make use of a brown backdrop since uh it, mm. it relates more to the skin tones and it's going to complement mm. the whole entire frame the whole entire frame so that was that was his choice for the selection of the backdrop <laughs> Well, I know I can see from the work here that you really enjoy what you do. I can see from, you know, the amazing colors that uh, you, you have a, a lovely list of clients. Um, let's see. All right. So I have a comment here uh, from someone. Um, Iari Ofolo is asking, how do I invest in your business? Um the another follow-up is you seem to understand your work um all right so aerial follow or i think is ea aerial follow okay maybe that's it uh please uh just go ahead and uh type in a way we can contact you maybe on linkedin or on instagram or maybe even a contact number and we can give you more information am i right yeah yeah so I can get the information to you. Uh, but thanks so much for watching. Um, okay, Ebenezer, uh, Ario follow. <laughs> I hope I got it right this time. Please forgive me for uh, mispronouncing the name. Ebenezer, thank you so much for reaching out and thanks so much for watching. Um, so 
while we wait on Ebenezer to, uh, you know, send in his information, we need to go a little bit further. Um, I want to think about, you know, aspiring photographers who are trying to break into the industry uh, to be successful. I know that there are probably some things you had to swallow when you when you started. Oh, yeah. There's some things that, you know, you are probably called photo, photo, you know, Come probably, out, probably had a lot of <laughs> for a long time yeah. before you know you got to this particular level what advice do you have for any upcoming photographer who is trying to build on their creative process and their brand image talk to us um one i'll say um you you have to be patient you have to be really really patient you have to love the job it's not just uh you don't just do it for the money if you do photography just just for the money trust me you're gonna give up on time. You have to be patient. You have to sharpen your skills. We learn and we unlearn. You can learn something today. There's a new technique to make it better, to make it stand out. You need to learn and unlearn, unlearn and unlearn all, all the time. You also need to um, invest in your, invest, invest, invest in your skill, um, and more, more, more. also, work with what you have. Work, work with what you have, but. But have a picture and a mindset of where you want to be. It might look so little, you understand, but work what you have and have a mindset of where you want to be. Without you, that's what I just have to say. Um, and don't give up. Don't give up. No, none of us, none of us are born with the knowledge of, oh, this is how you do it in Photoshop, this is how you do it in Lightroom, uh, this is how you do it in Capture One. We we all we all learnt it. So just you need to put in the work. You need to put in the work. You need the work. And yeah, you're good to go with that. You're good to go. I have to say a big thank you to you, Arnold Wafo here, founder of NAP. Yes. At, uh, and it Wafo worldwide. And <laughs> well, I, I'm I'm so pleased to have met you, and I love what you're doing. And uh, maybe I, I maybe I should contact you for some photos. I think I need a few photos. Yeah, I'm available. I'm available. I'm uh, available. <laughs> We're gonna create stunning no, uh, images. Stunning images. I can't wait. I can't wait. All right then, Arnold. I have to appreciate you for coming on the show today. If you're just tuning in and you would like to be part of the uh one-on-one -on -one with titi Oyin. so maybe you want to be on the next episode of the show the information is scrolling across the screen right now all you have to do is send an email to dynamite podcast network at gmail.com dynamite podcast network at gmail.com and we will get back to you thank you so much for subscribing to this channel following this page and being part of the one-on-one -on -one podcast all right. Thank you, uh, Arnold. Thank you so much Excellent. for joining us. Okay. All right, then. So um, Arnold seems to have everything down. He seems to have put together um, put together a system that works. And uh, we still have some comments coming in here. Let's see. Ebenezer is asking. Oh, no, this is Bolaji Emmanuel here. Let me see if I can bring Arnold back in. Are you still here? Yeah, I'm still here. Uh, he says, how, how do you manage clients? He says, how do you manage clients? Uh, that's Bolaji Emmanuel. Um, as quickly as possible. Go ahead. All right, so one thing you should know is that they are your clients. They are paying you, you understand? So for the fact they are paying you, you need to... Uh, there's a certain respect they need to be to be given it was of them being difficult and uh, and all so um the way i manage my clients is i i get to i get to talk to them softly i get to make sure i deliver my images on time i get to make sure i keep to my words and my integrity more more so um i make sure i tend to uh check on my clients send opinion months messages and no other fairing and all from time to time because they need to pay you they need to book you so you just need to be in close contact with your client all the time i have like a broadcast list of messages on my whatsapp and on my mail where i reach out to my clients from time to time so as you see it all right sounds like you have it locked down i'm loving the images i'm seeing honestly i i almost want to just continue scrolling through your page but this advert don't do i don't advertise you finish you don't do <laughs> but that that was a beautiful stunning photo that i just saw just now lovely work, thank you lovely very work. much 
Um, Bolaji, hopefully that answered your question. Uh, I just snuck that one in there before we have to wrap it up. And thank you so much, Arnold, once again, uh, for being part of today's show. Thank you. <laughs> thank you for having me. All right, then. Now, photography is a space that has grown and grown. Uh, it's all about creativity. It's all about brand image. It's a powerful medium for conveying messages, for telling stories, for creating a brand image. And finding the right photographer is very, very important. You have to have someone who's patient enough, who understands lighting, color, the process, and someone who will be on time. <laughs> yeah, you do not want your photographer late on a very important day. All right, then. Now it's a process. Uh, and uh, this particular podcast is also a process. And I appreciate each and every one of you who are still watching. Yeah, the floor is open for you if you would like to be on the one on one podcast. Just send us an email. That's dynamite podcast network at gmail.com. And we will get back to you. Now that QR code is still on the screen for a reason. There are quite a few of us who are trying to find different ways of making extra change on the side. Now, if I tell you 43% commission, you understand what that means. That means 43% of whatever you sell comes back to you. This is a beauty company called The Untamed. And if you scan this QR code on your screen right now, it'll redirect you uh, and get you started. For those of you who probably don't wanna have to move around, don't wanna bother about logistics, about delivering products to people, they have everything covered. They literally deliver everything to your customer's door and they give everyone their own online store. I don't know why it's, as in how, how easy could it be to do business online when they've given you all the tools you need? All right then, uh, until next time on 101, thanks for watching. Bye.